Hi, it's Josh from Under the Table Hot Sauce. I'm here with my friend, the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Yeah, what's up, JB? Nah, nothing. It's been a hot summer, and for all your barbecue needs, you can go to UndertheTableHotSauce.com. 13 unique flavors to choose from, created and bottled in a Long Island kitchen. UndertheTableHotSauce.com. Let's go chow, JB. Let's do it. All the flavor, twice the burn. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude. Good fucking wine. Yeah. And these young girls are saying, boy, he got great tan legs. Great tan legs. That. Hey, I never get tired of hearing that. Right. You know, I, got a, you... I got a beautiful wife. She's 43 years old. Okay. 43? What? I was going to ask 43. if the girls put you over, but apparently your wife's putting yeah. you over. Never mind. Well, let me tell you something. Wow. But she still gets a little jealous. You know why? Because I buy her the things she wants. And she doesn't want me to buy those other women anything, and I'm not going to. Ron, how on earth did you pull this off? She's 43. What did you do? Hey, baby. Well, I, met her, I, met her at a very, very, I met her at a very, very young age, and I'm not going to say what age that is. Wow. Was she in kindergarten? Stop it. <laughs> now he's going to get mad at you all over again. Stop it. He's just kidding, Ron. Yeah, no, Ron. No, no, she just wasn't. Kidding. No, she just wasn't. Okay. Go. Dark Side of the Ring starts, right? I think it's season four, right? Right, right. Um, there's an episode on of a gentleman by the name of Adrian Adonis, who, by the way, Ron, um, due to his daughter being on our show, Dark Side of the Ring contacted her. Angie. And they came up with this, this episode. Yeah. Um, Not bad. I've always been a huge fan of Adrian Adonis. Your thoughts on Adrian Adonis, the human being, and then maybe the wrestler, from what you know? Well, I, I, I would certainly go out with uh, Adrian Adonis and Dirty Dick Murdoch. Uh, we would go out to the bars, especially when we were up in the uh, touring, touring Canada and so forth. Because those guys love to go into the bars, the VFWs, whatever they are, and drink warm beer, come outside with a buzz, and then when the Indians would attack us with knives and sticks, they love to beat the crap out of them. So they'd always give me a heads up. They'd say, hey, Ron, they're going to be waiting for us out there because they, they know the wrestlers are in town. And these, these Indians up there, they love to start trouble and everything. So... Uh, but Adrian Adonis, the guy, the guy, you didn't take no bullshit from that guy. I mean, you know, he he was a tough guy that I can remember, and uh, but also a hell of a nice guy, hell of a nice guy. You know, he had got my number, and later on in my career, he was going to bring me up to uh, up to uh, I don't know where up, up Montreal area beyond Montreal actually, and work for the uh, Bear Man, and it was going to be for the summer tour. And uh, the, the tragic story was that, uh, uh, you know, they were in an accident and they got killed, the bear man and him. And uh, I got a call from Tony's office and I uh, said, uh, no, you won't be coming up. Those guys passed away. And that was actually pretty much the, the promotion pretty much ended. But uh, also, Adrian was a hell of a talent. I mean, when he, even when he had that, that weight, I mean, the guy could fly all over that ring, outside the ring. And it, and it never, never hurt him one bit. Let me ask you, as a wrestler, right, you build these relationships. Like you just said, you had a, some sort of relationship with Adonis. When he has this fight with Dan Spivey and Dan Spivey beats the living crap out of him, do you feel like you want to defend Adrian or are you like, this isn't my deal? Well, certainly there had to be something that 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 that, that clicked there that 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 went crazy and and i don't know what it was you know did somebody say something the wrong way and, and took it the wrong way or is somebody acting like they uh, are, are tough shit or yeah i don't i don't know you know first of all i wasn't around that time when that happened uh, all i can remember is sitting in allentown and uh seeing this guy big heavy set guy come through the curtain and i thought it was a japanese guy but it was Adrian, whose face was so swollen, his eyes were shut. And I said, oh, my God. I said, I can't believe that was him. And, you know, Spivey's sitting down the other end, and, and, and Donna still comes in there and says, I'll get you, you bastard. <laughs> you know, he may have gotten the shit kicked out of him, but he wasn't going to back down from anybody, it seemed like to me. But, you know, every, every, those guys were just kept apart most of the time anyway. Did you ever find yourself in that type of situation where it had to get real? Um, yes, uh, 
early in the 90s, uh, well, th this was almost like a riot. I was in the Philippines, and uh, we were getting so much heat on the uh, on a guy, I can't remember who it was. Uh, we busted him, busted him open. Uh, his partner went back to the dressing room, and we were just getting so much heat and everything. And next thing you know, these Filipinos start running to the ring, and they're starting to throw chairs and everything like that. And I said, "We we, we got to get the hell out of here for our own safety." So in the meantime, you know, we're swinging, going back, and everything. And, and I can remember my hand getting getting hit by a chair. And, and it was it was sword and swelled up for for about a week for the rest of that tour, but there was another incident that happened uh, when I was in the IWF, okay, down in Pennsylvania, uh, the IWF part where Dominic Danucci is the one who who started that okay that that federation down there, and we just merged with Killer Kowalski from New England, and we were doing a show in Virginia. And I was working with a, a big football player. The guy was solid as a rock. I, I don't know who trained him or anything, but we were in the ring. And uh, he's not selling. He's not doing anything that, that you know, you know, in the business, there's three terms, register, selling, and buy. Well, this guy wouldn't even register, okay? And he's making me look foolish. So what I had to do is after warning him two or three times, I had got him in a reverse arm bar drove him down to the mat and i started bending his his arm backwards in other words hyper extending it and, and i can remember hearing something you know could it have been a crack i don't remember but i damaged that guy's that guy's arm pretty bad I, and uh, i mean there was there was no there, there was nothing said anymore. I mean, he was kind of pissed off on me back in the dressing room. And and uh, that was pretty much the extent of my issues because, you know, I got along with everybody. You know, I got along with everybody. And I made sure I got along with everybody because, you know, you never know who you're going to need a ride with and to get to the next town. But it didn't. after a while, we were starting to fly everywhere. So uh, those are my two experiences.